So I've got a little bit of horrible news for you guys. I broke the Mantis. So see when I key on, it shows 0% battery and everything's just completely disabled, except for the horn and the headlight. Nothing else functions. Just so we can take a look and show you guys that the battery should be about 80% right now. Yeah, just about 80%. We were just riding around the neighborhood with David a minute ago, and I decided to download the app and mess with the controller settings. I was able to confirm that I successfully connected to it through Bluetooth and able to make some changes with the top speed on eco mode and whatnot. But then I made the mistake of updating the controller through the app and that pretty much bricked it. Since there's still very limited information on these bikes, since they are brand spanking new, I'm gonna have to do a, some digging myself. I'm gonna start by pulling out the battery, taking this cover off and seeing what's going on down there. Since I'm not too familiar with how these controllers are set up and how their harnesses are, let's go take a look. Hmm, this is just randomly sitting at the bottom of the battery tray. So once we take the battery out, you can kind of see the back side of the controller. I'm gonna pop off this cover and see if we can have a closer look at the controller. Just using a quarter inch drive wrench with a T25 socket. Wasn't really planning on having another project, but hopefully this at least helps you guys get a better idea of how the electronics work on the Mantis. Who knows, maybe it'll inspire me to upgrade the controller and get a higher top speed. It's interesting, the cover for the controller has like these rollers on the backside to help guide the battery when you're sliding it in and out. Okay, so here are the three phase wires going to the motor, yellow, green, and blue. Up top are the battery terminals, ground and power. And then there is the harness over here. It's two connectors, a bigger one and a smaller one. My fault, there's actually three connectors. You know what? Screw it. Let's take the controller off and get a closer look. To take the controller off, it's very similar to like the Talarias and the Surons. It's gonna take the cover for the horn off so we can access the two bolts on the top side of the controller. We're gonna take these two bolts off and I believe that's it. We're just gonna disconnect the harness from the back once we pull it out. I feel like we're still at a point where this is considered uncharted territory. I haven't seen too many people talk about upgrades or confirming upgrades for the Roar Mantis X as far as controllers and motors. I mean, the motor look, looks like a regular QS120 mid-drive, so I'm thinking we could upgrade the controller at some point with something universal. I really don't wanna lose the function of the display though, because I think it looks pretty cool. And I wanna make sure that that works after all the modifications. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer and see what's gonna be available. But who knows if uh, enough of you guys ask about it, I may explore upgrading the controller myself and sharing that information. Hopefully I don't get Roar too upset about this. Disconnect the connector for the horn, comes off just like that. And then for the four controller bolts, it is T30 Torx bolts. All right, I'm just gonna make myself clear. I am not a professional. I'm just some random guy on YouTube sharing my projects with you guys, so please do not use this as a tutorial. Just sharing things as I'm discovering them. So if you guys want me to continue sharing information about the Roar Mantis X, make sure you hit that like button so I know that you're interested in this kind of content. So the controller is actually pretty small. The black box around it's just a plastic cover. Now that we have the controller pretty loose, 
that gives us enough slack to unplug all the connectors and cables from the back side. All right, so now let's unplug these three connectors. I believe this one six pin connector at the very top is for the hall sensor for the QS motor. So I could probably swap this connector out and then use a different controller, like a universal one, if I really wanted to. And then these two other controllers go to the rest of the bike. I'm gonna review the wire harness and the wiring diagram, just so we can get a better idea of what each one does. Now I'm just gonna take a Phillips screwdriver and take off the five screws from the phase wires and the power cables. You know what, I'm actually gonna do that with an eight millimeter. There's gonna be less chances of me stripping it out. Just like that, we have the Mantis controller out. So according to this label on the side of the Mantis controller, it is showing a max input current of 90 amps and peak output current of 300 amps. So we definitely have some room for improvement if we decide to do a controller upgrade, though it really depends on what this battery can put out. There is also a label on the side of the battery that says 21700, which is what I'm assuming to be the battery cell type. And then 20S6P2160 watt hours. Oh, okay, that's just a capacity. I don't see anything about what the BMS is rated for. If you guys happen to know what battery management system is in this battery, and what it's rated for, please comment it below because I'd be really curious because if this battery can put out more than 90 amps continuous, we're upgrading the controller to see how far we can crank this thing up to. And since there is still very limited information about these bikes, I'm just gonna try to help you guys out as much as I can. I'm sure some of you guys may be wondering what the battery dimensions are for potentially a battery upgrade in the future. As far as dimensions, it's about a little under five and a half inches in width by six and an eighth. And as far as height, just over 16 inches, including the handle. So if you want to start looking at battery specs or seeing what's available out there, maybe for a Suron, maybe we can find a battery that could potentially be retrofitted in this frame. It'd be really nice to be able to fit like a 72 volt, maybe 40 amp hour battery in here. The limitation is definitely gonna be height. Unlike Surons, you can't just replace a cover that's on top of it because this is actually directly below the seat. And while we're at it, I'm also gonna give you guys the dimensions of the controller. Get your minds brewing. And just imagine what controllers we can retrofit onto this frame. About 92 millimeters in width and just under 150 millimeters in length. That should give you guys an idea what size controllers we should be looking for that we can fit in this general area of the frame. All right, so I was just reviewing the factory wiring schematics and it actually doesn't look too complicated, but I can confirm that there's no like brown wire or green wire that we can cut to de-restrict the speed limit. It's just simply in the programming. Okay, so three wires from throttle, controller, phase wires, hall connector. I mean, this pretty much tells us everything, you know, how the horn is wired, where it's getting power from, and it shares the ground with the headlight. Everything runs on a voltage step-down converter. I was looking at the brake wiring switches. Since this bike doesn't have a tail light, I was thinking about wiring one in until this controller thing happened. I did send Roar tech support an email about two hours ago uh, regarding the update that I did and how it bricked the controller through the app. So hopefully they get back to me with a solution. Worst case, if they don't, we'll be upgrading the controller. Their tech support team actually reached back out to me within 12 hours of me submitting a request. I've also been staring at the drivetrain and thinking that there are plenty of options we can take if we want to swap out the gearing. 
So the front sprocket just looks like a 13 tooth, six spline, like a pit bike style front sprocket. That's meant for a 420 chain. So this uses the same chain as a Suron or a Talaria. So I started looking at the rear sprocket and notice it looks very similar to the bolt pattern on my Talaria Triple X. So this is my original stock sprocket since I swapped that out for a smaller one on that bike. And this is meant for a 420 chain and it's a 48 tooth. All right, so the stock sprocket for the Mantis X, 420 chain, 51 tooth. As long as the bolt pattern and inner diameter of the sprockets are the same, we should be able to use any Talaria sprocket on these bikes. And since we're already here, we might as well confirm that. So inner diameter for Talaria sprocket is a little over two inches. Let's swap that out to millimeter. So 52 millimeter, exactly what the Mantis is. And as far as distance between the bolts, just get centered with two of the bolts here, about 40.5 millimeters. Distance between two bolts here, it's, it's exactly the same. If you are looking into swapping out the gearing for your Roar Mantis X, I'm pretty sure that you can swap out any Talaria sprocket as well. So if we step it down to a smaller sprocket in the rear, it should result in a higher top speed with a trade-off of losing a little bit of low-end torque. And the same thing goes the other way. If we go with a larger sprocket for the rear, it lowers the top speed, but it increases the low end torque if you're into wheelies and all that. Or if you just do a lot of hill climbing, that might be the ideal move for you. All right, I'm just gonna stop myself here before I get carried away with looking into too many mods and start buying things and start modding this thing because we've literally only had this bike for two weeks and I really should sit on my hands for at least a month or so before we just start pulling the trigger on a bunch of upgrades. But I hope you guys still found today's video helpful as far as figuring out specs and dimensions and planning out what's possible for your Roar Mantis X. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, want to keep up with my Roar Mantis X, my Talaria project, or any of my other Razor projects, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.